Okay, we're going to look at multiplication of real numbers today. Uh, we're going to look at multiplication of positive in, positive numbers, excuse me, and negative numbers. Oh, man. Um, so with this um, video, uh, there should be a number of shortcuts. Uh, you want to try to use shortcuts when they help you out. Um, but then also try to also pick up on why the shortcuts work, and that will help you make sense of everything else. And the last thing before we start is no calculators. Try not to use a calculator. Um, with multiplication, it can it will slow you down in the long run. Um, so try to wean yourself off of it. Um, but also, I know you will always have one. So it's a good thing. I like calculators. They're great. But try to do these without a calculator. It will help build a good number sense for you. Okay, so let's talk about signs. The product of two real numbers with the same sign is positive. So if they're both positive, it's positive. This is what you know already, right? But if they're both negative, then it's going to be negative. Um, the reason for this, actually, we'll look down here at the reason. But um, in short, the reason is because you have negative 6, negative 3s. Uh, so that's going to end up being um, positive. Uh, the product of two real numbers with different signs is negative. So 2 minus negative 5 is, is negative. 10 and then negative 7 and 2 would be negative 14. Okay, so find the product. So here, these are both um, negative 8. Um, sorry, they're both negative. So negative 8 times negative 6 is positive uh, 48 when you do 8 times 6. Here, negative 7 times 2 is going to be um, negative 14. And you can think of this as two negative sevens, because that's multiplication, right? So you could think of it as this way. If we were to seven times two, like seven times two, which we know is 14, it's just seven plus seven, which is 14. So negative seven times two is negative seven plus negative seven, which is negative 14. Um, here we have negative 0.5 times um, negative 4. Um, multiplying by 0.5 is something you should try to learn to do in your head. It's just dividing by 2. Um, so negative 4 divided by negative 2 would be positive 2 and then times negative 9. So now I have the signs are different. Uh, so it's negative 18. Here, um, when I multiply fractions, you multiply straight across. So you get negative 3 over 3, uh, which reduces to negative 1. And then negative 1 times 7 is negative 7. Um, here, 2 times 2 and a half. So let's think about doing this in our head. So to do like 2 and a half of something in your head, don't worry about the half first. So 2 times negative 2 or negative 2 times 2 is 4. And then, so kind of keep that in your mind. We have 4 in your mind. And then half of negative 2 or half of 2 is 1. And so you're going to add that value to what you had before. So 2 times 2 and a half would be 5, and it's negative because the signs are different. Um, and then negative 5 times negative 4 is 20. Also, 2 times the number is just the number twice, so 2.5 plus 2.5 is 5. Uh, when you multiply fractions, you just multiply straight across. Uh, the first two have different signs, so they're negative, and then 2 times 4 is 8. And then here, the numbers are um, both negative, and so that makes a positive. 3 times uh, 2 is 6, and then 8 times 3 is 24, and that's positive because they're both negative. Um, and then these do reduce. Uh, 6 goes into 24 four times. Okay, so these are the properties of multiplication, um, and we'll kind of go through these a little quickly. Um, the big thing is to get... Uh, what they mean. So order does not matter with multiplication, the commutative property. The associative property says kind of the same thing, but grouping doesn't matter. So you can multiply first, second, and then uh, second, third. If you multiply anything by one, you get what you started with. That's the identity property. Anything times zero is zero. 
uh, the property of zero. That's useful um, in a lot of algebra stuff we do. And then um, if you multiply by negative one, then it just changes the sign of the number. Okay, so let's look at identifying some of these. So here, uh, we multiply by negative 1. That's the uh, property of negative 1. And I would pause the video and, and try to work these out on your own. Um, here, uh, order doesn't matter, so that's the commutative property. Uh, this is the property of 0. Actually, we'll call it the 0 product property. Um, here, it looks like we're regrouping things. So 2.5, negative 2.5 times y, and then over here, we're going to do the y times negative 4 first. So that's the associative property. I want to abbreviate that one too, too good. Um, and then here, 12 times 1 is 12, uh, and that is the identity property. If you multiply by 1, you just get what you started with. Uh, which we you use that a lot with fractions, adding and subtracting fractions. Okay, so let's try some more multiplication. Um, once again, make sure you pause the video and, and work through these. Um, substitute the values in. Be careful with your signs. And then these are both negative, so it makes a positive. When you multiply. Here, um, you could go in order, um, which is fine. Um, and if you want to do it in one step, just count the negatives. So there's one, two, three negatives, so that's odd. Um, and you're going to end up with a negative number. Uh, to kind of take it slow, uh, negative four times negative two would be positive eight. And then eight times three, those are both positive. That's just 24. And then that negative 1 turns it into negative 24. Here, watch your signs again. We'll always say watch our signs. Um, that's a 12, excuse me. Um, here we're going to multiply these two first. So let's make that negative 6 and then times 1. You can write it like this because these are really just fractions over 1. You multiply the top times the tops and the bottom times the bottom. And then this reduces to one half. Six goes into 12 two times. And then 0.5 uh, times negative negative two, which is kind of weird, um, and then negative three. So this really, like you probably won't write this too often. If it's negative x, then you just change the sign, uh, make it positive. And 1 half times 2, that's the same as dividing by 2. Uh, so that's just 1. And that's just negative 3. Okay, and the last thing we'll talk about on this video is a little bit more about the inverse. The inverse property of multiplication is very important when we solve equations. So it'll be good to talk about it now. It is the thing you multiply by that makes 1. Um inverse I forgot my e there okay so the inverse here would be um negative one sixth the reason for that is if i multiply negative six times negative one sixth then i just get one so you can see hopefully you can start seeing this pattern of like you were flip uh, flipping the fraction so negative six over one is just flipping the fraction um, 2 times 3, we're going to flip the fraction and make it 3 times 2 for the inverse. To justify it, we could say, well, 2 times 3 times 3 times 2 is equal to 6 over 6, which is equal to 1. So that justifies our answer. Here, our inverse, we want to make it 1, and it's negative, so it's got to be negative. And then flip the fraction, 4 over 5. And to justify it, just like the other ones, 
we can multiply. You can also think of this with multiplication as like, if you remember canceling or cross canceling, uh, we're reducing the fours cancel, the fives cancel, and the signs are both negative, so it becomes positive. Okay, so good luck. Have fun multiplying numbers.